Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Ch Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased that our guest is Roger Lanning, the Highway Commissioner for Sheboygan County. Roger, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. As you know, it's that time of the year when temperatures are dropping and snow's on the horizon, and Roger and his staff have been gearing up as they do every year. And we're pleased to have Roger today to share a little bit about what's all involved with the highway department's roles and responsibilities and how can we make your driving conditions a little safer this year. So, Roger, why don't you start by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and your role as highway commissioner. Okay, thank you, Adam. Um, I've been employed by Sheboygan County now for 25 years, uh, the past 18 as the county's highway commissioner. And um, every four years now, I am the position of highway commissioner is elected by the county board members. So for the last 18 years, I've been able to serve the, serve the county. And in that capacity for the last 18 years, uh, you've done a tremendous job working with a, a very important department. What are the roles and responsibilities of the highway department? Primarily with the county highway department, of course. So we have the responsibility to maintain, design, and construct the, the county trunk highways would, within the county. For example, our, our, our mission statement is, uh, says that we, uh, our goal is to uh, create safe and reliable transportation today and tomorrow. So how, how many employees do you have? We have 117 employees, and uh, the 117 employees are broken up. As everybody knows, we have two seasons in Wisconsin, construction and snow removal. And during the summer months, uh, the, the 117 employees are broken up in, into various construction crews. For example, crushing gravel, building the roads, blacktopping the roads, and doing the, the routine grass cutting and things like that. And then, of course, winter time, we're broken up into, uh, into the six different area uh, garage locations. Many of the viewers will realize that we have a, a garage at, at, near Howard's Grove, Elkhart Lake, Plymouth, um, Cascade, Adel, and of course along the interstate south of Sheboygan. In each of those, what I call district garages, are responsible for maintaining on an average of about 190 miles of roadway uh, for plowing purposes. 190 miles of roadway. Can you break that down <clears throat> a little bit for us uh, in terms of town, county, or state highway? Sure. Total in the county, we have about 1,500 miles of roadway. 452 miles of county trunk highways, 172 miles of state and interstate highways, and about 880 miles of the town, city, and village roadways. And of course, these these are not. This doesn't take into consideration the four lanes, but it's it's just that many linear miles. So 117 employees working on construction and road improvements in the summer months, obviously keeping our roads safe and snow free mm -hmm. in the winter months. Uh, can you describe a little bit that organizational process? Obviously, there's no way you can communicate with 117 people each day. And you mentioned the different garages throughout the county. How does that work? How's your organizational system? Well, the, the way we're set up for a management team is set up. We, of course, we have crew foremen. Each of the crews I mentioned, the construction crews, has a foreman and a lead person for them. And then each of the district garages, as I mentioned, has a, has a supervisor in them to coordinate the workforce. So we have somebody coordinating the workforce at the district sheds and on the various construction crews. Uh, they have two patrol superintendents who basically move the men around uh, to the various jobs, shift them around to, to where they're needed to, to get the work done. And, and basically everything funnels through my office and you know the, the jobs that we have and, and that we get in are all broken down as to what the manpower, machinery, and materials are needed for each one, and then they basically set that up to get that done. So if someone has a question or a concern about a road that's being improved or a slippery intersection, mm -hmm. do they contact your office directly, or are they better off calling one of those uh, sheds? Usually they're better off contacting the, the area shed. For example, of course, during the wintertime, they're better off if they're in the area of Elkhart Lake, Cascade, Plymouth, whatever the case may be, they're probably uh, as well off calling the, the district garage in that area to report any, any, anything that needs to be taken care of. 
versus during the summer, it's probably easier to call the main office in, in Sheboygan. That's where our administration office is and, and uh, repair shop is. And they can put you in touch. And, and if anyone ever has a problem contacting Roger or one of his um, district shed, certainly they could contact the county clerk's office, right. which is in the, in the phone book, and the county clerk or her staff can refer to the appropriate area. So you mentioned all these roads, over 1,500 miles of roads in Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the roles and responsibilities of the highway department? The, primarily with the, the county highway department, our main function, as I mentioned, is maintaining uh, the, the county roadways. The county trunk roadways are, are the ones with the letters, be it J, V, PP. Those are the county roads, uh, which is the county highway department's, Chiboyan County's primary responsibility. So of the 1,500 miles, about 450, I think you said, were county, county, county trunk roads. That's correct. Okay. And then, again, the town roads, some of those you are responsible for right. taking care of, some you don't. Out of the total of the 1,500 miles, uh, during the winter months, we maintain about 77% of those 1,500 miles, which means we maintain for the, the state on the state and interstate roads and, and the majority of the roadways in the townships. And so, in other words, we work with the townships and the state highway department to do their uh, many and most of their, their maintenance uh, items, snow plowing included. Very good, and that's probably a good segue to Bill. Okay, being the county board chairperson, I'm also the town board chairperson in the town of Sherman. I like to say that I'm very grateful that we have the highway department to rely upon for contracting for various types of work. But could you tell our viewers about blacktopping and other construction that you do for municipalities? Sure. Part Part of my role as highway commissioner is, is, is to market the, the highway department services to the local units of government. And uh, just to back up just a step, not, not only do we work with uh, the state and, and, and the towns and villages, but also interdepartmentally, mm -hmm. uh, be it uh, all of our various uh, county departments, be it the airport or here at the, at, at the University of Wisconsin-Sheboygan, or any other uh, county facilities where there are maintenance work or roadway related or driveway related items uh, we also work with with the county departments but as my role to, to market the highway department services I, I i work with the townships and sometimes putting together budgets but also estimating uh their blacktop work if they have some or seal coating of the roadways grading ditching anything that uh that is needed to maintain the roads we we basically are, are able to help and provide that service to the uh, to the towns, cities, and villages, and of course the state highway, state highway department. Now, Wisconsin is unique in the nation in that the, the State Department of Transportation contracts with each of the counties, the county highway departments, to maintain their roads in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and that's really the only state in the union that, that does it entirely. Some of their states have a varying degree once in a while, but generally, like for example, if you drive to Minnesota or Illinois, you, you have this, those state highway departments that have all of their own equipment, for example. The state of Wisconsin doesn't have any of their, their own equipment other than maybe a centerline uh, machine uh, and maybe a signing machine, but they're really getting out of that business too. So they basically are, 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 are labor intensive and have no uh, machinery of their own. So really there's a cost benefit to the local municipality to not have to own the equipment to be able to contract with the county for doing things. Well, I think so in that, in that uh, any time that, that, that you can pool uh, manpower, machinery, and materials to get the work done, for example, the townships where we do the work, you don't, you don't have the capital investment uh, to, be able to, to buy the equipment, maintain the equipment, and really main, maintain, the, maintain the labor force that's required and pay the wages and benefits. Uh, from from the from the cost benefit standpoint, the more that our workforce is 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 utilized, uh, the 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 more economical or the cheaper that the work can can be done. You know, it's it's just like in manufacturing, the more the more call the widgets that you can produce in in a certain amount of time, the, the the cheaper the unit cost. And and it's no different with the highway department. And so, in working with the villages and the city of Sheboygan, we. we, we and for example, the city of Sheboygan, we share some, some uh, specialized equipment and they work with us uh, purchasing blacktop or gravel and, and, and other services that we provide. In addition, uh, in the county there's 237 bridges. 
and we, the county does all of the bridge inspections for all of the municipalities within the county. So that we do a lot of varying work with basically all of the municipalities within the county. And you know, it's as I said, to, to get the word out uh, as officials change in the cities and villages and towns to, to remain in contact with them to, to show and share uh, the services that we can provide. What is your department's total budget and what percent might be involved in snow removal during the winter? Okay. Total budget that's in, is, is 13 million and that's the expenses for working uh, with all of the entities which I mentioned. About, uh, about a million dollars of that on an average is, is for snow removal on the county trunk roads. And about 300,000 of that million is for salt and sand, just, just materials. And on an average uh, snowfall, let's just say, uh, a one to two inch snowfall, we would, uh, that would probably run about fifteen to $18,000. And you can get that done in about six, uh, six to eight hours. But that uh, depends on all the so many uh, variables, the wind speed, the wind direction, if the temperature's dropping, you know, sometimes when it snows, you can, the wind's in one direction, by the time the storm is done, it's all the way around the, the dial, and you, you've chased it all that, all that time. So, in the in the perfect world, yeah, about fifteen, eighteen thousand for an inch and a half or two inch snowfall. Mm -hmm. How many snowplows do you have, and what varieties? I remember as a kid watching the old Oshkoshes mm -hmm. move down the highway. <laughs> well, we have uh, sanding, salting units, and of course have the plow in the front. We have we have thirty nine of those. And, and once again, they're, they're split up amongst the, each, each of the district garages, as I mentioned. If it gets to a point where you have to push back the drifts and the shoulders, and whatnot, we have 12 graders we can take out in addition to those. And then if it gets really bad, we, we still have a number of the old Oshkosh trucks that, that, that you can get off, the four-wheel drives that you can get off and push and bench the, the snow drifts. Uh, we've been fortunate we haven't had to use them a lot in the, in the last few years, but they're, they're there and they're paid for. and. It's like a fire truck. They're, they're, they're there if we need them. What are the normal working hours of your department? The normal working hours are, are 7 to 3.30. Um, what we've done during the winter months now, starting November 15th, is that we have two guys who work, we'll call it a second shift, 3.30 to 11, and then two guys that work 11 to 7. The purpose of that is to handle any emergencies that uh, we would get in during the winter months, whether black ice or icy intersections or <clears throat> accidents or just simply calls from the sheriff's department when calls come in to them or, or, or the different conditions around the county uh, that we're, we're able to respond uh, quicker and basically to stay on top of a storm. Because in Sheboygan County, many, most of us know that east to west and north to south, there's a tremendous variable that occurs uh, we always have heard about lake effect snow. Well, you know, you have, there's different zones in the counties. For example, traditionally, if it's snowing, you, you'll see a difference between the lake and maybe Highway 32 and 32 to 57 and 57 to Greenbush and then Greenbush to the West County Line. All the different changes in elevation uh, are, are affected by, by the lake, for example, and, and of course, north to south. So having the guys, the two guys in the second and third shift help us to stay ahead of the changing conditions then that are out there so that we aren't all of a sudden caught with an emergency. Do you still have a summer construction schedule that you had a number of years back? Or yes, that... yes. Um, uh, traditionally, as, as many of the viewers know, we'd, we work four 10-hour days from uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. And that helps us to, to of course, get the work done. Working the 10-hour days uh, during the summer is, is certainly a must because you can't, you really don't want to quit in good weather at 3.30 in the afternoon. And that's, that's worked quite well for us. And of course, if there is uh, a pressing workload, with, you know, we, we have the ability to work on Friday if, if, if needed. So that's worked quite well. Okay. Do you have any winter tips for people in the area on snow removal? When they're plowing out their driveway, should they plow it to the middle of the road and let the highway department <laughs> clean off the rest? <laughs> well, I, I, unfortunately, that in, in that regard, when property owners push snow across the road or, or leave it deposited on the road, now they, in, in essence, they're, they're creating a liability for the traveling public. You know, if there's an errant vehicle 
for whatever reason, would, would hit that, if it, if it uh, gets solid and packs mm -hmm. and hard and someone hits that vehicle, it's whoever pushed it out there has created that hazard. And uh, yes, there's some liability on the property owner's uh, part to, to, to keep that, they need to keep the snow really off of the roadway, really off of the shoulder. If they can get it off of the shoulder, that's great. So if we can keep the roadway and the shoulders clear, that certainly helps on uh, the safety of the traveling public as well as our snowplow drivers because when you're coming down the road and 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 you hit this this hard mm -hmm. snow it'll it'll spin that truck right right around and, you know going and go the other direction and of course you have, you can damage the equipment severely so I strongly recommend keep the snow off of the the roadway and the road shoulders. The most important thing that we see in, in the snow removal is, is people following too closely. Now in the last legislative session, there, a, a law was passed that, that indicates that people should stay behind a snowplow if they can, you know, stay back 200 feet. Keeping in mind that when you get to an intersection, you're, you're not going to necessarily stay back 200 feet. But at the same time, don't pull up behind the snowplow because we, the guys, the operators can't see the vehicle necessarily in the rear view mirrors because of the width of the truck. You can't see that, that car right behind the truck. And in many cases, when we have to clean up an intersection, we, we have to back up in order to, to take a second, a second swing in order to clean up the intersection. And so, and this historically, I think this goes back forever, trying to clean up snow is that you have to back up to clean up the intersection. And backing accidents has been the been the primary um, if there's accidents going to happen that's that's been the primary uh, primary incident and so you know and then of course speed to people to know, to know the, the conditions that they're they're dealing with you know just because the sign says 55 or 65 you don't necessarily have to drive that you have to have to you know keep your don't use cruise control you know, keep your hand, I mean, your, your, your hand on the wheel and, and, and your, your foot on the accelerator so that you can brake if necessary. Many times, uh, if, if you're on cruise, for example, and say you're coming up by 43 and, and, and you don't know that the bridge decks are icy, if you're on cruise and you hit that icy bridge deck, it, you, you will lose control mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. Finally, any tips for the motoring public on how to find out what the road conditions might be before they start out? Yes, there, um, one of the things you can do is to, uh, is to go on the county website, and, and we have these numbers available, and I'll give these to the viewers. The, the state uh, uh, road condition report you can get at 1-800-762-3947. And then the Sheriff's Department also has a, has a phone number that the viewers can call to get the, the local road conditions, and that's 459-4304. Okay, thank you, Roger. And a comment I made earlier that if people had questions or wanted to get in touch with you or one of your staff, they can contact the county clerk's office, which is kind of a general office yes. that people seek information from. But if it's after hours, a lot of people contact the sheriff's department, yes. don't they? Yes, and we stay in close uh, contact with the, the sheriff's department. We have an excellent working relationship with the sheriff's department because there are they're also eyes and ears out on the road. And, you know, there's emergencies. We all have to pitch in and, 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 and take care of them. The other point I wanted to come back to is you mentioned for every snowfall, on average, then we're looking at what about fifteen, fifteen, eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand dollars. Every time it snows out there, the public can essentially appreciate <laughs> that there's fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars of tax money that's going to go into cleaning up those roadways, and yes. obviously that's critical. And to put in perspective the size of and importance of Roger Lanning's department. Uh, of the Sheboygan County's 23 departments, and of course we, we cover all the departments and programs uh, briefly during this program. Um, Rogers is in the top five in terms of size, a $13 million department, and uh, in the top five, top five in regards to the number of staff too. So a very vital service that Sheboygan County provides, and again, as Roger mentioned earlier, he's been doing it for the past 18 years. So we've talked a fair amount about snow and, and what drivers can do to improve not only the safety for your staff, but themselves. Uh, let's move on to another area. Uh, this summer, folks have pretty much concluded now stopping at those slow or stop signs and <laughs> getting passed on through and the trucks have moved by. Uh, what types of projects has uh, the county been working on over the last year? Well, uh, I'll start with uh, some of the 
the work that maybe the state DOT has worked on this year, and then I'll dovetail into the county's work. But, uh, for example, State Highway 32 from Sheboygan Falls to Cedar Grove was a, was a contract job that the State Department of Transportation let out for basically the, the, the resurfacing and blacktop shouldering and of, of that roadway. There were some minor rebuilding on a, a couple curves, uh, but that was completed uh, this late, late in the fall. Um, State Highway 23, there was an extension of the four lane and uh, out n near Plymouth on that uh, this year. And right now, some of the viewers as we're speaking are, have been dealing with the ramp closures on I-43 at the uh, State Highway 42 intersection where, where they're, where they're re rehabilitating the off ramps for I-43 at 42. From the county uh, standpoint, we just opened up uh, a bridge that we reconstructed on County O over the Sheboygan River in the town of Sheboygan Falls. Uh, we, uh, we, we did a number of interdepartmental jobs, for example, as I mentioned, uh, at the airport. We, we worked on uh, uh, the area where the, for future private hangar, they call them pu private uh, taxi lane extensions. Uh, we worked on that job for, for Chuck Mayer the, uh, out at the airport. Uh, we recently completed an extension of the State Trunk Highway 23 Rec Trail near Greenbush. That was a little over a mile extension. Uh, it, as you know, the Rec Trail lies on the south side of Highway 23, and we extended it from Plank Road to County Highway T, uh, once again on the south side of the roadway. And that, if, right now, that's as far as the recreational trail is planned, which gives access to uh, the Rec Trail to the, to the Wade House. And then... Uh, uh, County Trunk Highway S in the village of Glenbula. We reconstructed that. That was a joint project with the village of Glenbula uh, to, for, from a rural street with, with what I call with, with ditches to an urban section or street which, which, has, uh, uh, which has curb and gutter and it was fully reconstructed right now. So, so those are the main projects that, that we worked on this summer in, in addition to our normal asphalt resurfacing and seal coating uh, of the various roadways. A lot for people to get their arms around. As I drove to and from home in the town of Plymouth to work here in Sheboygan, uh, obviously some work being done on 23, very important to the economy, and uh, that's work that your department isn't doing. And right. I think perhaps you could clarify to our viewers who was doing that and what's the status of the work on 23? This, the State Highway 23 four-lane uh, extension uh, is this phase of it is from County OJ to County Road P, a distance of about two and a half miles. And that was a Department of Transportation job, which was a bid contract, and uh, um, Mashuda was the contractor out of Princeton, which, which did the grading work on that. And that'll be a two-year project. They've, they, they have the, 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 the lanes roughed in now, the extended lanes roughed in, and they've worked on some of the bridges, Next year, they will be building the County Road C interchange, which is uh, on the, the, the west access to the city of Plymouth, and it feeds the industrial park where, there, where Sargento and some of the other major uh, Plymouth businesses are. And that will start in spring, where they'll build the bridges, build more structures, and then, uh, and then surface the roadways, which were graded this year. So by the, this time next year, that four-lane extension should be completed. In the long range, uh, State Highway 23 between County Road P and Fond du Lac is in the works and in the process of going through the uh, environmental review and, and uh, design alternatives. And that's scheduled in, it, it, it's gonna range from about 2009 to 2011, where they'll probably start work on, on the major four lane extension to Fond du Lac. And that'll all occur Many of our viewers who travel to Fond du Lac realize that they're building the 151 bypass, and uh, so once that's completed, then they'll probably start on the Highway 23. And it'll be here before we know it, as quickly right. as time passes. Another um, improvement that's been in the press in the past, and I know that you and the Transportation Committee have really helped follow and, and get initiated, is the work on LS. Mm -hmm. And those folks who do any golfing out that way at Whistling Straits or just enjoy that drive up to Manitowoc know that that's getting increasingly close to Lake Michigan. Right. What's the status of the work on LS? Well, uh, the work should be completed by the end of November. And what's being done there is because of the 60-foot the bluff that's out there, 
uh, is extremely unstable because of the subsurface and the gr uh, groundwater and, and the type of soils that's out there. And as you indicated, the roadway itself uh, has been, has been e the earth has been e eroding to a point where it sits up near the road shoulder. So in conjunction with the Corps of Engineers and, of course, and county dollars and, and, and some Department of Natural Resource uh, help, we've been, been able to essentially, essentially stabilize that 500-foot section of Lake Michigan Bluff, which was in the, in the most uh, severe, the most dangerous uh, uh, erosion where, where it was really going to affect the, the roadway itself. But we're hoping to have that done uh, the end of November. And in the couple of minutes we have remaining, uh, when you're dealing with 450 miles of county road out there and the tremendous expense associated with not only maintaining it but resurfacing, what have you, there's no way you can do that all in one year. And, no. and I know, Roger, you have a very good planning process. Mm -hmm. What are Give our viewers a snapshot of what you see coming in the next couple of years ahead. Well, in the next couple of years right now, we're, we're in the process of, of a number of different designs. Uh, the one where probably the most traffic is is on Superior Avenue. We have plans uh, to rebuild Superior Avenue or County O from Taylor Drive eventually out to State Highway 32. The first phase, uh, which is being designed right now for construction in 2007, is the part from Taylor Drive to I-43. And then in 2008, 2009, 2010, eventually get out to State Highway 32. And that piece of roadway, as you know, is just a rural section with ditches, and what we're in the process of designing is an urban section of roadway, which would have the two travel lanes and a, and a middle turn lane. So people, and they make left turns and right turns, you can get in that middle lane uh, to make your turns because of the amount of businesses and residences along that stretch of roadway that's probably the best way to uh, to rebuild that roadway. That's one of the jobs. Uh, County Highway V, we're continuing the design of that from State Highway 32 westerly, this next stretch to County Highway I. And then uh, we're still working with uh, the reconstruction of County Trunk Highway P and A between Glen Beulah and Elkhart Lake. And, uh, you know, those, those are the major ones we're focusing on right now. For, you know, we have a bridge on County Highway SS in the town of Sherman over the Milwaukee River. That's scheduled to be re rebuilt next year. And you know, with as many roads as there are and as little resources you have to work with from a standpoint of the cost associated with resurfacing, what have you, mm -hmm. what is it, a 10-year plan that you have? I mean, it's a very extensive outlook and process. Well, I, I actually have a 20-25-year have a, have a plan set up. And, uh, from, the, from, from, the, from the beginning to the end, it takes four or five years by the time you st send the survey crew out by the time you actually get the road built. Well, Roger, thank you so much for being our guest today. A lot of information in a short period of time. Certainly, if you have more questions or concerns, don't hesitate to contact Roger or one of his staff. He's got a great team in place. I think we all know from time to time there's jokes occasionally about guys out there working on the roads, but... Let me tell you, I am so proud of the work that Roger and his staff do. A vital service, a very important county service, and representing one of the largest departments that we have. So, Roger, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Next month, you're going to hear from another department head. That's Ann Wonder Jim, and Ann Wonder Jim uh, directs the largest department, the Health and Human Services Department. Number of very vital and important services as well. So, until then. Thank you for joining us, and on behalf of County Board Chairman Bill Gehring and myself, Adam Payne, thank you.